We got a creepy spider lady chasing me around a house while I hide in a cupboard watching Chinese TikTok. This game has it all. Parkour, driving, worms, and a Dark Souls-like boss battle. Besides the weird story, which we'll, uh, we'll see in a bit, this game actually surprised me in a lot of ways. For some reason, the game has mostly negative reviews. And to get an idea of what this game is all about, let's just, uh, read the Steam description. A student's sister, who has been secretly in love for a long time, has been missing for three months. Tonight, my sister suddenly called and asked me to go to an abandoned villa in the suburbs. I have no choice but to prepare for departure. It is said that the villa is a famous and dangerous house. There'll be more on the uh, the whole sister part later, but uh, anyway, jumping into the game straight away, we get... Of course, Steam VR. But hey, look at that. We've at least got a disclaimer just telling us that this game is still being worked on. The game's not in early access, but I think this is their way of just saying that, look, this is our first game and we're still trying to improve it. Anyway, moving on, we can actually see that they have quite a nice title screen. You've got this mysterious dancing shadow in the background. They do also give a good amount of translation options, although later on there is a bit of dialogue that just isn't translated. These settings are actually quite refreshing to see, especially in this series. It's fully fleshed out and you can even change the keybinds. So, so far, it's pretty good. But now let's actually start the game and see what the hell all of this is. Now there is an intro cutscene, it's pretty long. The only highlight really is just woman gets in bath. You know, so far, this is a good game. But then we see our character wake up, and I'm not gonna lie, I was quite impressed. Do you know what? Hey, look, it's it's not too bad. It feels it feels like I'm playing, like, Armor 2 again. In terms of level design, you can see that they actually tried. You can see that they actually tried to make this look like a cool house, and not gonna lie, this actually looks like a really nice place. Like, this is the kind of place that I would happily live in. Uh, but I can see up here that there's a uh, a quest. It says, go play on the computer first. I'm not going to do that. Whoa, I can run. There is a, there's a key. Hang on. No. Oh, I, I missed it. I could observe that item, but at least, oh no, I can look at it. Oh, that's weird. As you can see, I was genuinely impressed by the apartment. I don't know if this is a complete store-bought package or anything like that. But after picking up this car key, I went over to the computer because apparently that's what I needed to do. Now, these guys went a step further when it came to the computer. They're actually login mechanics. For some reason, I thought I could just skip the password and press enter. But that doesn't work. You actually have to figure out what your password is. And it turns out that the password is the birthday of uh, my senior sister. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly thought that this, uh, this game was gonna go into some very weird direction. I mean, according to the NHS, uh, a senior sister is responsible for the overall running of each ward slash unit and for standards of nursing care. I mean, it's either that or this is some kind of sting operation from the Chinese government. But I don't know. You can be the judge of that. Anyway, the password does come with a hint, but I was still confused. So I took another look around the apartment to see if I missed anything. I was instantly distracted by this, uh, this charger cable. If I can use this to charge my phone, I'm going to be a very happy man. But I really couldn't find anything, so I used the hint, I, I tried to find the date on Google, and after a couple of tries, it just tells you. Your character remembers, and there you go, you're in. And I'm not gonna lie, the next bit was quite impressive, considering that this is apparently their first game. So double click, oh, oh, n wow. Are you kidding me? They've got like a, they've actually got a mini game in here. No way. Why? I guess because they could. I'm actually, I'm getting a call. I, fuck off. Oh, I want to play the game. I was genuinely speechless to see a, a full-on platformer game with items, with loot, the ability to shoot arrows and throw bombs, with even a boss at the end of the level, so much so that I just ignored this call until I played through the whole thing. This doesn't contribute to the game whatsoever, but it, it's just a nice-to-have feature that they didn't need to do, but did it anyway to add at least a bit more content. Anyway, after completing this little game, I decided to answer this call. The game is on the screen still, man. Attention to detail. Is this meant to be my sister? I just want to make it clear that I honestly didn't know what senior sister meant. So throughout all of this, I, yeah, let's just say that I, I thought we were going into some dangerous territory. Anyway, after this call, I'm supposed to go ahead and find my phone and charge it. Uh, observation. Okay. Do I have to click like the side here? 
Yes, I do. I'm weirdly impressed by this game. Uh, watch your phone carefully and find the password. Wait, 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 wait. like this. Like this. Guys, yes. That's what you call a fucking puzzle. I think I've set the bar for this series pretty damn low. So much so that unlocking a phone is actually a surprise to me. To be honest, I don't think I've ever actually seen this in any game I've ever played. But now I need to go ahead and charge my phone. But you see, I wasn't expecting there to be any proper logic behind this. So I could see this plug hole here and I already had the cable for it. But then for some reason, it just didn't work. And that's because you can't plug a USB into a power socket. Again, I I've probably set the bar so low that I, I genuinely thought that's all you needed to do. But this game actually runs on some kind of logic. So I had a look around the house and I found this adapter and there you go, I could charge my phone. Now the phone is quite useful, you can use it as a flashlight, but don't you worry, we will check out the apps later. But anyway, my next objective is to go to the parking lot and drive over to my senior sister's house. And this is where the game starts to throw some spooky stuff at us. Uh, I kind of want to go back in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused as to why I need to go to my sister's house, but maybe God is trying to punish me for uh, what I'm about to do, so... That's where the horror aspect of this game kind of comes in. If if dizzy, uh, 3D, press V. No way. Is this um, recorder, pigeon, lemon? No idea what that reference is. Uh, I'm a paranormal investigator. Just open up TikTok to investigate what's going on in this corner here. There's just some giant trash cans and a lot of darkness. Oh, I can actually take the lift. Uh, where's my sister's house? Which floor do I take? Uh, I, apparently I've got to go... Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I should not have pressed it. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. I am not even joking, that genuinely got me. I, I, I thought I was alright for a second. I was not expecting that in the slightest. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, we keep going down. Oh! 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 You're dead. Ah, to start over. What you heard right there was genuine fear. It was almost as terrifying as the blue babies in Inhuman. Anyway, after restarting, I thought that the uh, the elevator might not be the best place to go, but I did notice that there was this stairway. Now, it was pretty dark in there. I was expecting some kind of jump scare, so I was on edge. While going down the stairs, I noticed the first bit of jank in this game, where when you look outside, you can kind of see uh, under the buildings, but something didn't feel right. You see, I was going downstairs for what felt like forever, only to realize that I was stuck in a loop. It was like Super Mario 64 all over again. So I went ahead to try the lift again, this time actually realizing that none of the buttons are in order. But it turns out you can at least press the emergency button. So after the jump scare, which looks like this by the way, I pressed the emergency button just to see what happened. I guess I got my car keys so... I can jab them in the eyes. Okay, I pressed the emergency. That's gone off. Press this. Oh my god, it's a skeleton. Sorry, I bought the medical model. I'm moving it home. Okay. Well, this is interesting. This is a really cheesy scare tactic, but uh, I, I like the fact that it's just a model there, and for some reason this nun I I is bringing it home. Anyway, now I'm in the parking lot, and uh, I'm already on edge because it's dark, and I know something's gonna happen. So I go ahead to have a look and see if I can find my car. On the way, I found this vending machine with uh, Uranus bars. That was quite amusing. But it turns out that I have to go deeper into the car park. And things got tense pretty quick. Let me guess. Jump scare. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh my god, it's right there. Oh. 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 It's right there. It's, it's right there. Guys, did you see it? it? It was literally right there. So far, I'm impressed with the uh, the spookiness of this game. It's nothing groundbreaking, but at least I'm on edge. Anyway, when I get over to my car, it has this cutscene where we see some feet. But when we go to check around the other side of the car, there's nothing there. So now the coast is clear, we get inside the car and things get interesting. Oh god, it's right... It's right there. You on... <laughs> oh god. 
it's right there. This is a really nice detail. They actually use the, the, the back camera to give you a bit of a jump scare. And because there's not really anywhere to go, the idea is that you're meant to try and avoid the monster. You don't want to actually hit it. So I put my driving skills to the test and... Uh, well, I, I try to shimmy out of this corner. Now, the monster is still following you at this point, so you really need to remember how to get out of the parking lot, but thankfully, it's quite straightforward. And there you go. That was the, I think, second level. There are about seven in total, all with their own unique quirks. But anyway, now I'm at the, uh, the senior sister's house. But there's an issue. She's got this red-eyed dog. Now, I had a look around the place because I wasn't all too sure if uh, I had to go through the main gate or if I had to sneak in somewhere else. But then I noticed that there was this food bowl here, and because the game seemed quite intuitive so far, I went to the boot and I saw some bread and wine. The idea is that you're meant to put both of these into the bowl, so the dog's obviously not just going to drink the wine on its own, it's going to eat the bread. But when it's mixed together, it puts the dog to sleep. When I made it to the front door, I noticed that I could interact with these pots, and again, it's quite relatable. You know that there's going to be some kind of key under one of these, and there you go, there is. So now I'm in the house. And I have to say, when it comes to the level design, I'm not too sure if they bought this as one whole asset pack or not, but it looks really nice. Anyway, it turns out that the senior sister is having a bath, so I have to wait downstairs. Don't look at me thinking you have the moral high ground, right? You're, you're the one watching this video. Of course I went upstairs straight away. Well, actually, that's a lie. I did check out the room a little bit, but I like the fact that the developer actually knew that this was going to happen, so... They had some dialogue ready for it. And our character is one thirsty chap. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to play the piano. The piano mini game is pretty straightforward. You just click the keys in the order that they light up. And once you've done that, a key drops from space. Now, this key is a very important key. It is, in fact, the key to our senior sister's bedroom. It's quite an innocent looking bedroom. There's a piece of wood on the floor and a lighter in the closet. But most importantly, the moment you've all been waiting for. Um... <laughs> what the f- <laughs> What- uh. Well... Oh! Oh! Oh god, no, I'm getting out of here! Oh god! Oh god, what? Oh, Jesus Christ! Uh, let's go back upstairs. Um, girlfriend, help me. I mean, sister. Oh god, I'm so confused. Do you know what? Oh. Got the key. Oh, there she is. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna hide in here. Can't get me when I'm in here, b <laughs> Never mind. There's a uh, there's quite a lot to unpack with this whole segment. It turns out this was a trap, and this uh this spider queen lady comes in and stamps on our chest. I guarantee, if you look at the timeline on this video, you're gonna see a lot of people replaying that moment. And if you did, just just smash like. It'll purge your sins. Anyway, we're now playing a hide and seek horror game, where after this cutscene, I'm being chased around by this woman who likes to walk on all fours. I guess like a spider. So before triggering the cutscene, I remember that there was this key in the bathroom. But I also noticed that there was this closet. And to be honest with you, I wasn't all too sure if I could actually use it or not. But you can, in fact, hide in closets. So I hatched a plan to play the cutscene, run upstairs, grab the key, and hide. Speed run this. Get the key. Interact. Hide. And I could see her come through. There's not really much I can do in here besides, I guess, hear her walk around if she gets up here. Yeah, there you go. She just, she's just gonna chill here and then jump scare me in a second or what? Yeah, unfortunately, this is most of the gameplay for this part of the game. What I end up doing is hiding in this closet for a little bit. And then once the spider lady's gone, I, I go and explore and see what I can find. Now, for a good time, I was confused. I mean, we opened up the living room, but I really couldn't find anything in here besides this, what I assumed to be a spider egg and a ring hidden behind this 
painting, which looked nice, but I didn't really know what to do with it. So I go around the house at least 10 times, honestly trying to find any kind of clue, but I was completely lost and had no idea. It even got to a point where I thought that I was missing some kind of input, that there was some kind of control that would help me to progress. But what I found instead sparked curiosity, and that curiosity was heavily rewarded. Cell phone select, up, down, select, left, right, sign out. Let's see what else I can do with my phone then. Pause, play. Well, that's an experience I thought I'd never have, but, uh... What can I say? You can watch Chinese TikTok whilst hiding from a monster. 10 out of 10. There were so many that I was just spamming next to see if there was an end, but unfortunately, that crashed the game. Anyway, as great as it is to procrastinate whilst under threat, I was still lost. I had absolutely no idea what to do. I was doing the same thing as before, just going around the house trying to see what items I could collect. I mean, I found a plank of wood, some fuel, and a lighter, but nothing else. Until I found this lock that required a code to gain access to this bedroom. This was a great find and at least I had some kind of direction, but for the life of me, I couldn't find a code anywhere. So while ready to give up, I noticed that in the menu, there was this strategy guide, which is just a link to a video on some Chinese version of YouTube, I think, which basically goes through the whole game and shows you what to do. And it turns out that the ring that I found earlier had the clue all along. Now, thankfully, this is where we start to make some progress. As inside this room, we can find a safe with the combination pretty much next to it. Inside, there was this manual on how to deal with the spider lady. Basically, we had to go around, collect these eggs, and find a place to burn them. So now with this new information and this key that I also found in the safe, I went looking for eggs. There we go. And I've got another key. And... A wrench, or a... a Clipper or something. A vice, that's what it's called. There she is. Gonna wait for her to probably go up the stairs. Yeah, going up the stairs. Yeah, she spotted me. Come on. Okay. So, glove room key is probably up here, right? No. Is this the glove room key? Yes, it is. Okay, I found the glove room. What's this? Another key. It's good. She's here. Whoa! Whoa! Gotta run. There she is. She wants me. Do they want me to go in here? Vice. Yes. There we go. We've now made it into the basement. Now, in this basement, there's this metal trash can thing that we can use to burn the eggs. So now all I need to do is just go around, grab all the eggs, and burn them. Which was quite a straightforward process, even though the spider lady seems to speed up the more eggs you burn. She can actually get down in the basement too, which is, uh, it is quite intense. But after burning the last egg, we're given this cutscene. There we go. I've done it. I've actually done it. Thank God. Run. She's, she's gone low poly. Oh, what the... All right, man. <laughs> oh, that's so jank. Gonna be real honest here. They kind of dropped the ball on that last bit. But you see, this isn't the end of the game. This whole part was what I would like to call the actual horror segment. The rest of it is kind of hard to explain. Because after this, the front door is open. And common sense would say that we could just go to the car and drive away from whatever the hell this nightmare is. But no, th th that's not what happens. Instead, you're meant to go down a well, which leads us into a cave with an entire underwater segment. There's eels and everything. I guess I can just easily avoid them like this. Please tell me I can. There we go. A dragon ball in its mouth, what? Now, none of this makes sense, but it's kind of cool that we have this entirely new mechanic and what appears to be quite an appealing environment. So after swimming around for a little bit, I found this 
Dragon Ball, which gives me the ability to breathe underwater. Now, for the sake of science, I did attempt to see if we can actually watch TikTok underwater, but unfortunately, you can't do that. However, I did find this guy right here who had some kind of stone tablet and this device. And after picking it up, we get this cutscene where we basically just look at this door that's all the way up there. But then we're told to find a whole bunch of other tablets by using this, what I've now discovered to be, a tracking device. Gonna be honest, that's not the first thing I did. I tried to do parkour and it, it just didn't work out. Oh, oh, you. See you next Tuesday. So I went back underwater to try and find these different pieces because I knew that that was the only way that I was actually gonna progress. Oh. Is that guy, is that guy coming after me. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god, the shark is a friend. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Got it. Oh, you can hear- Oh, okay, it's right there. I'm so glad I, I gave up on trying to do parkour just to do this. Because I would be so screwed if I had to come back down just to collect all these pieces. It's a f jellyfish is just holding this piece and he's, look, he's going fast, he's swimming. Ow. There we go. Okay, got all the pieces then. As random as this whole mission was, I actually quite like the fact that they put the tablet next to the tracking device in the beginning. So at least it's clear that this is the thing that you need to find these. But also the fact that they're not all in stationary positions. That even this jellyfish going at the speed of light was carrying a tablet. But anyway, with all of the pieces, we can now finally access the door all the way up this slippery slope. But this now brings us onto what I like to call the three mazes. As soon as I made it into this place, I knew that finding the exit would be a bit of a challenge. And, uh, yes, they did drop in some jump scares. Please don't tell me I'm gonna have to, like... <gasps> oh, Christ. What do I do? What do I do? There's a giant thing after me. Something after me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's more things. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, this way, this way, this way, this way. <gasps> oh god, jump scares galore. Oh god, it's- it's- it's getting me. Uh, uh... Where do I actually go? That's what- what I wanna know. Well, that was awkward. Is this still down there? It- it, it didn't really- Oh god, it, yeah, it is. Yeah, god. Oh, f no. Okay, tell you what, dude. Uh, here- here's a- here's a deal. Uh, you, oh, you, you don't kill me, I don't ki kill you. You see, I, I, uh, never mind. After dying, I noticed that there was some blood on the floor. Now, common sense would say not to go in the direction of whatever this is, but it turns out this was actually a trail all the way towards the end. However, there's this kind of green mist, which makes us hallucinate into the next maze. Are you telling me that I- have I died? Oh, bro, no, I haven't. I think I'm about to. Is this just a maze? <laughs> looks like sh the flying bug looks like sh Even the developer knows what's going on, man. He, he, he knows that these assets are jank. Yeah, to be honest with you, this is, this is pretty much all this level is. It's just a bunch of giant worms and maggots and a lot of holes. But the next bit... Now, the next bit is actually quite interesting. We drop into probably the cleanest gaming PC I've ever seen. The walls are made of different coloured circuit boards, and you have all these flashing lights everywhere. But this maze was by far the hardest. Not only did I get lost multiple times, even returning all the way back to the beginning, you gotta deal with this. <laughs> Oh god! Oi, oh god, oi, oi, you yeah. cheeky bastard. Oh, where are we gonna go now? We're gonna go left again, we're gonna go right. Uh, hmm, being chased. I don't like this. Uh, oh god, still getting chased. Uh, whoa, we're not gonna go that way. Oh god, there's another one. Um, maybe I go this way now. Go 
it this way. I don't think I'm being chased anymore, but... Yeah, it seems like every single corner I take, uh, there's just another jump scare, a, a loud scream, and something's chasing me. Now, at the beginning of the maze, your character mentions something about these wires. So, similar to the blood trail in the first maze, I followed the wires. And it actually goes on for quite a while. There were all these different twists and turns, and sometimes you wouldn't really see a wire for a little bit, and then you'd see one, and then follow in that direction, and then see another one, and change direction. But even after following the wires, somehow, somehow I managed to make it all the way back to the beginning. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna throw my hands up and just say this right now. I, I went back to the guide. I wanted to just confirm if the wires actually took me to the end. And there you go. It does. That is probably the fattest L on my end. I swear to God, I don't even know how I got to this point on YouTube. Anyway, when you actually get to the end, you've got this cutscene where you're pretty much just sucked into the computer fan. And then we find ourselves on the other side of the first maze. First things first, we have this crystal here that just acts as a checkpoint. But then you also have this lift with a countdown. You can't press any of the buttons inside of it. It makes absolutely no sense. Like there's no explanation whatsoever. Anyway, what you're actually meant to do is jump down here. Hey, I don't have to worry too much about uh, dying in this game anymore, because let's be real, it's, 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 it's more of a walking sim now. <laughs> I'm gonna be real honest here, the parkour in this game isn't actually that bad. It's a lot less janky than something like Hello Neighbor. And if you know anything about me, you know that I've had a nightmare with that game before. But what we're meant to do here is just go all the way down to this bridge. And to be fair, it's quite straightforward. There wasn't much of a challenge to it. In, in fact, it was actually quite rewarding. But then we actually get to the bridge and for some reason, our character, I don't know, he, he, he gets a little bit too cocky, let's just say that. <laughs> Well, at least the game has comedy. Yeah, I wasn't wrong about that because this whole next bit is is just full-on parkour. There are all these different wooden poles. Uh, some of them are spinning. This one here that you can uh, you can stop spinning by getting over to this platform and uh, pressing this button. And I would be lying if I said that this wasn't at least somewhat challenging. Jump on there. Jump here. Oh, oh, oh my god. God, that is going to fling me off if I'm not careful. Alright, I saw the checkpoint. I need to get to the checkpoint. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect timing. I've interacted with it. I've interacted with it. Oh, man, I was... I was about to go mad. One of the things I really appreciate about this is that they they at least try to make it interesting. You actually have to use some kind of timing to get on other platforms. You've got this spinning pole here with all these little bouncy bits. And they actually added some kind of variation to the jumping mechanic. If you hold down the space bar, you jump higher. So at least there's a little bit more control. Although a problem I found with this is that sometimes I'll just forget that if you hold space bar, you jump further. Which means that for a few times, I would just over jump some bits. At least I know what the lift is for, but it's it, it seems like it's not on demand. You have to... <laughs> well, well, well. The rest of this parkour section consists of jumping on more poles, running across moving beams, this giant spinning beam here that you need to stop at the right time so that you can jump on it and hope to dear god you don't overshoot it at the end. If that wasn't hard enough, there's also this other spinning pole with a bunch of spikes and these activation points that once you step on them, they uh, they change the direction. Thankfully though, there was a checkpoint right at the beginning of it, so it wasn't too difficult to get through. But when I finally, finally got to this button here, I pressed it and the whole place filled up with water. So all I had to do next was to swim over to the other side of the bridge. But when I got to the other side, there was this. This weird snake thing. I don't even know what to call it. But it was clear that this was a puzzle and I needed to solve it in order to open this door and progress. Okay, get this right. There's not really any kind of um, indication as to what you need to do. I think I just need to press buttons. Uh, maybe... No, I, th I think you just gotta 
turn on all the buttons that you can. I'm going to cut to the chase with this one. It made absolutely no sense. There were these tiles on the floor and you can slot them in. And it does give you some clues in the top left hand corner. But the idea is that you need to press the right buttons in order to, I guess, unlock the door. However, it was much easier said than done. The problem with this puzzle is that there wasn't too much of an explanation as to what to do. There wasn't anything on the wall, any kind of guide that I could try and find. Something hidden, but fairly easy to find if you just explore or look around for a bit. However, there was just nothing like that. So after a good while, I... I did it again. I went back to Chinese YouTube and I wanted to see how they actually solved this puzzle. And this was the guide that they give you. I'm, st I'm, I'm starting to get the idea that this is probably a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, <laughs> if you look at it for a couple of minutes, it makes sense. But without this guide, it just doesn't. Now, here's the weird part. When I alt-tabbed back into the game, the puzzle just solved itself. What I've got to do here is with this one... Wait, what? But then I notice this in the top right hand corner. They have this novice mechanism, which basically helps you to progress through the game if you get stuck. We'll be seeing more of this later. Anyway, with that all out of the way, I can finally progress and uh, things very quickly get kind of spooky. I think it, I, lit I literally think it just opened up for me because uh, I have no clue what I'm doing. Yeah, that is weird. That is very. <laughs> I was trying to explain how the game worked and. Do I just... Do I just jump? This is, uh... I really, really hope I can... Oh. That was weird. Really hope I can bring up my phone again. Okay, now this place is the, actually the creepiest so far. Got a torch. There we go. And it's green. That's sick. Right, I'm gonna get jump scared, aren't I? Like the uh, the classic break sound effect. It's it it's Dark Souls, man. Okay, I'm hearing something now. Yeah, follow the blood stains. Always a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. No idea what's trying to kill me now, but guess I'm going upstairs. Here we go this way. Oh god damn it! Oh, there it is. Bit confusing, not gonna lie, mate. Bit confused, don't know where I'm going. Oh, maybe this way. Is it gonna stop following me at some point so I can just get on with my life? I think it is, yeah. Okay. After getting chased by ghosts for a little bit, I noticed that there were these things on the floor and one of them was this stone. Now the whole point of this section is you need to find a bunch of stones to shove into this hole. I probably could have worded that better, but you get the point. Now, similar to the water level, you get an item, which is this bell, that rings when you get close to a stone. But what the game also tells you at this point is that by breaking pots and being out in the dark without a light source, the ghosts will come for you. <laughs> oh, crikey. Oh, it's a bloody ghost. It's a bloody ghost, Pa. <laughs> oh, God. There's more ghosts. Okay. I'm in warm light. You can't get me. Can't get me. Okay, you can get me. All right, cool. Whatever. Dick. <laughs> oh, man. I've really not made it easy. For I keep smashing all the pots. This is not, uh, it's not a good situation to be in. Are they gone? They might have just gone. Okay. Seems like this is probably the worst place to be. Because I think the ghosts are more active around here. Not hearing anything with the bell. Oh, right there. Okay, there are, there are more. I need to figure out how many more I need. I feel like there's, there's probably like two more left or something like that. Ah, oh, bulls. Okay, I've got it. It's in the freaking jar. There's also ghosts. Oh! <gasps> there is parkour. Can it get me from here? Oh, got it, can it? Get me? Oh, wow. Uh, oof. Weren't expecting you, mate. Not gonna lie, creep me out a little bit. Oh, 
Oh, you... You... Yeah, the ghost got me so hard that I, uh, I dropped the hard C. But after dying, something happened. Now I could see the different fragments highlighted through the walls, which basically meant that the novice protection system, or whatever the hell it was called, was now switched on. With this, I could go ahead and find all the different fragments. But after a good amount of time, the door just got fed up and figured it out for itself. So this novice protection system, or whatever it is, kind of makes it a bit pointless. Anyway, this next bit has us going down a corridor. Now, one of the weirdest things about about this is that you can't run, you're stuck in first person, and it's kind of hard to explain the rest, but it is kind of creepy. Well, I can tell you that this is not going to be good. Mm hmm. Okay, so you can't, you can't sprint. I uh, can't really do anything. I'm just holding this, which would be a good weapon, by the way. Uh, which, of course, I can't swing. And uh, now I've got to go down here and, I guess, get jump scared. Oh, God. <laughs> Scary. Now I'm dead. Right, so this one, I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to keep going. Uh, not look at it. Keep on going. It's kind of smart. Just uh, don't look at the thing that's following you, and you you should be fine. Okay, now I can run. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've, I've got to be careful not press the wrong one. Oh god. Um. All right. So here we go again. We've got another puzzle. We had a couple of jump scares. But with this puzzle, you need to follow a certain sequence. You've got all of these different buttons here, and you need to push them in order. And in this room, there are some clues. Next to each torch, you can see a different button that you need to press. But there are quite a few of them, and you have to press the buttons in the same order of which each torch lights up. Long story short, I did this for a bit, and there we go. It completed itself once again. But this, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been watching this video all the way towards the end, this has to be one of the most difficult yet rewarding grand finales I have ever experienced in this whole series. Oh my god, it's Quaylag. <laughs> this game is Dark Souls. That's my girlfriend. She's, uh, she's just hanging out. Right on the wall. I'm, I'm kind of confused, not gonna lie. Aha. Uh -huh. Novice mechanism is started again. Okay. I've got an achievement. Yeah. 
局上，白富美每夜与我聊到半夜两三点，相见恨晚的那个人，这一切都是假的。<笑>我本来想杀了你报仇，但是见你骨骼惊奇，日后必有大用。现在你只需要匍匐在我脚下，我就可以饶你一死。God damn. God damn. It, oh, oh, god damn. Yeah. This is, um. Yeah, this is definitely somebody's uh, kind of thing. <laughs> There's no way, man. There's no way. What the hell is going on? This is actually turned into Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, bro, she's actually difficult. Sorry for the long cutscene, but you know what? It was worth it. You got the Spider Queen lady just, uh, you know, asking you to kiss her foot. And then this absolute mad lad just <laughs> grabs her foot, just throws her away, summons the f***ing sword. And there you go. You've got a health bar. She's got a health bar. And now you fight. Now, this whole bit is actually the most challenging part of the game. The controls for combat are left click to attack, right click to block, and space bar to roll. I died quite a few times to this boss because she does a lot of damage and it's kind of accurate because i've got no armor at the end of the day i'm just some guy who was just trying to find my senior sister but it definitely required some kind of skill i mean you have to dodge at the right time just to miss the attacks blocking is effective but unfortunately the stamina bar just didn't go back up so you had this finite amount of stamina even though you could roll for as much as you want but it turns out that the spider queen actually has three health bars the first health bar is easy to get through you can typically just stun lock her by spamming attack but then when she goes into phase two she she does this insanely quick, high damage attack that if you're not ready for it, you'll either be stuck on very low health or just die. Now, I was recording quite late, so I was getting tired and I gave it about maybe, I think about 10 to 12 attempts before going to bed and giving up. I honestly thought that I couldn't beat this game because it was just so difficult. In fact, it was so difficult that the next day I looked up a guide just to see if I was missing anything, if there was any health. And trust me, I actually had a look around to see if I could find anything else. But what I did notice is that the stamina bar is meant to actually recover. For some reason, it was broken when I was playing it and I was worried that, that this was just a bug and it wouldn't be patched anytime soon. But when I loaded the game back up, it worked. And after dying once, I gave it my one last go to finally defeat Quaylag. Okay, does, does she get freaked out on this corner here? Let's just roll. Yeah, I knew it. Okay. She can probably get me through here. Yeah. But there was no there was no damage or anything there. There was nothing nothing happened. So I think the damage. We've we gotta see what happens when she jumps. Okay. Get her in a stun lock. Roll back. Roll back. No, not forward. That way. Okay. It does actually hurt. Okay. It's very... Okay, I've just got to keep sprinting. Christ. Get out of it. Get out of it. Okay, let's get, let's get the f out of here, bro. I, sh I actually blocked it. Oh, my my block has come back. I can actually... No way! I actually did it! <laughs> what? What? <laughs>
He's gonna suplex. No way. My God. I, th I have no idea what that was, but I have a feeling that was my Steam profile pick. And there you go. That's the ending. Alright, I'm going to have to do this. I don't really do this often enough, but there you go. I'm clapping. I'm actually clapping. I was impressed. I don't know why this has negative reviews. It is clearly a lot of effort's gone into this. Not the biggest fan of the parkour. But at least they at least they made the parkour interesting. It wasn't like they like there were some parts that were a bit slow, but at least they had like moving parts and switches and everything like that. They tr they tried. They actually tried. Well, there you go. They really did save the best till last. I already said it there. I don't know why this game has negative reviews. Maybe there's something that I'm I'm completely missing about this, or maybe or maybe the first release was just terrible. I don't know. Anyway, that was Spider Queen Cave. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And of course, a massive thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Patreon. And if you want to support for as little as £1 a month, check out the link in the description below. And finally, a massive shout out to all of my Wicked Slayers and Cyber Wizards. Negadan, Gibbles by the Dozen, Time Wiz, Anastasius, Roro Raggy, Rich Rick Rora, The Cuddly Bot, Montana Tuska, Camille B, Sprunkly, Rare Alex, Basto, Finra, Alex Caprol, Lin Kerr, Mr. Pine, Spooky, Artistical, Rizal Bugatti, King Swing, Distant Reality, Legayana, Drager Funyan, Christian Barbu, Thomas Novotny, Alex Nibs, Arcadius, Damien Rompapas, and Mr. Tektai. And I'll see you in the next one, where maybe, just maybe, we play a game that doesn't have Steam VR. Jesus Christ.